Namaste and welcome to the fifth lecture demonstration on Bharatanatyam. In our previous lesson, we saw joint hand gestures. We saw the concept of Mandala Veda, which is the grammar of your body, especially your torso. Today, we are going to see the Pada Veda and the Sthana Veda. Pada Veda, which is the grammar of your feet. And Sthana Veda is the grammar of a particular position that you stand when you are dancing. I hope you benefit from these lessons because these are one of the very important lessons for a beginner who would like to explore learning Bhartanatyam. Let's get into Pada Vedas. So after seeing our Mandala Veda, which is the grammar of our torso, we are moving on to the important grammar called Pada Veda. There are only five Pada Vedas because these are what you will see repeatedly when you want to do a dance performance. When you want to choreograph, you will see this particular Pada Veda. Yes, are we ready to see one by one? Get into your Aramandi positions. <clears throat> there are five varieties of Pada Veda which will focus on your feet. It has very less to do with your body, but your body needs to be in control. Udgati Taha is the first one. So where you will land on your toes and you will hold your body on your toes. It can be done one leg, other leg and both the legs together. We see this often in Taiha Taihi Adagu. This is called Udgati Taha. The next one is called Samaras Cheva which is again equal. Samam means equal in Sanskrit. Samaras Cheva with your body tilting forward. That is Samaras Cheva. The next one is Arathala Sancharaha. So your toes are touching the floor spread out. I show it in the side. Agrathala Sancharaha. So this is used like this. The next one is Anchitaha. It's how you do your Natadavar but without Aramandi. Anchitaha. And we use a lot of Anchita in our Tatteitaha if you remember. Tatteitaha. Dittei Anchita. Taha. So this is one feet grammar which is called Anchita. Side position and front position. See that? Lifted and landed on your heel. Anchita. Kulchitas Cheva. This is our last one. Where your leg is straight and this leg is folded. Kulchitas Theva. When do you stand like this? Can you think of positions that you will take with this? Kunchitas Theva. So these are the five feet grammar. You don't have to learn the names of the feet grammar or it is not important to remember the names of the feet grammar but it is very important to know these five feet grammars. When I am asking you, do you know the feet grammars? Can you get up and show me? Oh, I don't remember the names but I am going to try. Jump. Samapada. And... And... There you go. We will learn the names by writing them down in our book. Revisit what I did and write them down. Now, after seeing the torso grammar, the feet grammar, now I'm going to move into position grammar called as Sthana Veda. For one particular position and what is it grammar? What is the grammar that we have to take in, into account? 
Are we ready for that? Sthanavita. Sthanam means position. What is the grammar when we take a particular position in dance? There are only five of them that we are going to see. The first one is Sama. You know what is Sama, right? It means equal. Where your left leg is equal to your right leg. As if you draw a straight line and your toes are all aligned together. With your hands on your hip and your upper torso tilted forward. Sama. The next one is Ekapadam. As you can listen in the name Ekapadam. One feet on the ground. When you are in a standing position, you put your left leg firmly down straight, not turned out straight, and your right leg holding in your ankle, put it on your thighs, open your knees out, ekapadam. Following the Ekapada, we have Naga Bandha. So that is, in Aramandi, you lift your right leg and you lock it behind your left leg. Naga Bandha. Yeah, Aramandi, lift your other leg and lock it behind. Naga Bandha. Following Naga Bandha, we have Aindram. In Aramandi, you are in Aramandi, you lift your other leg. Aindram. It, can, it may not touch, but some teachers allow little children to have their leg on top. So that they get their balance. It's okay, it's okay for practice. But the ideal aindram is like this. Your toes pointing the ground. Aindram. Following aindram, we have garudam. Yeah. Some teachers say you can land on your knees. Some teachers don't. But it depends on the choreography. If you have to, you can land it on your knees. This is Garuda. And the last one is Brahma. This is something that we don't often use in Bharatanatyam. But if the choreography is asking for it, for example, if it's a dance drama and you have to use it, then you use this grammar called Brahma. Brahma. So, five position Brahma. So, in today's lecture demonstration, we saw joint gestures or Samyutta Mudras, and then we went ahead and saw Mandala Veda, Pada Veda, and Sthana Veda. These three are very important for a beginner to learn and to understand the concept behind it. Uh, if you have seen or observed a dancer on stage, you would have never seen them stand like how casually I'm standing. They would always have their hand, legs together with their body arched forward, samapada, or they would have their legs crossed, swastikam. Right? So you will you would always always see artists having one of the or they would stand like this. Right? In one of the grammar that we saw now. The Nakya Shastra gives us this particular grammar that is being followed in dance till today. If you go visit Kalakshetra back in India. They have these written down in their, in their lessons as part of their dance teachings. 
I'm very happy to share this information with you today. In the coming lecture, we will see some more details about Bharatanatyam. Thank you.